Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Sammy and today I thought I would take you through a bit of a stage ready makeup tutorial type video thing. I'm not a makeup artist, I just play around. Currently we're doing Les Mis with a local theatre company and so today I'm going to just kind of take you through what the idea for the Les Mis makeup is. It's going to be very basic stage makeup. This is more directed at male performers, but you know, first what I like to do is just chuck on moisturizer. You're going to be putting a lot of product on your face and you need to stay hydrated, especially putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, touching up, adding stuff as you go. Don't go too overboard, I just do like a couple little dots here and there. Now that we've put moisturizer on, the next step is usually foundation. Normally we get given little pots of foundation in our skin tone. They look a little something like this. This one has my lip and cheek stuff in it. It's just like red. I can't find my one with my foundation in it, so I'm just going to use normal foundation, but it kind of works the similar sort of way. So I'm using this foundation. Normally what I do, I just put like a little tiny bit on my hand because it's like a pump. I see it pumping out there. You can kind of get the blend right and everything. With the tubs, you just kind of grab a little bit with your brush and just put it on gently. You don't want to put on too much as you'll see in a second. It will really like blend out and again, I'll keep saying this blend is your friend. <laughs> don't be afraid to go into the hairline because you can always contour that out again. And you really just want to like fill in every nook and cranny. You should kind of see the difference after a while. Keep in mind too, this is very pale foundation. Normally for stage we go a little bit darker. For Les Mis, for example, we want to go kind of more of a sunken, uh, sorrowful, poor looking look overall. We kind of want a bit more pale, but you probably wouldn't go this pale on stage. I'm using this kind of brush. It's uh, big and flat and gets a lot of product on really quickly. You want something big and just dabby, so you can just kind of dab it out and make it really nice and almost like kind of matte, I guess. Again, I'm not a makeup artist, so makeup artists are probably watching this and absolutely screaming because I don't know what I'm doing. This side I haven't put any foundation on and this side I have, so you can see it's very um, covered. <laughs> And I look insane right now. I kind of look like Phantom of the Opera, and I'm kind of digging it. <laughs> but you can kind of see, yeah, like that's kind of what you're going for. Just like full coverage, just straight on there. I'm going to do the other side, and I shall be right back. Okay, so now I've got the full face on, and I look even more pale than I did before. <laughs> I look like I just stepped out of Warp Tour in 2005 and I'm kind of into it. Next is a very important step, we're going to be doing uh, powder. So you can buy these like pressed translucent powder things, BYS, cruelty free. You can buy these at Kmart, super cheap, super easy, and they come with this little powder puff. Push it into this, and then you just like, just like bat it all over your face. This is really important in theatre because we want a very uh, matte finish, we don't want glossy, we want very like no shine because of the stage lights. Powder too will also really help when it comes to sweat and if you're sweating backstage just chuck more powder on. Like, What I like to do is get a paper towel, do a bit of a dab if I'm really sweaty, really light gentle dab and then I go over it with pressed powder just to lock it all back in again. Next what I do is just grab a big fluffy brush and I just brush off all the powder. See how I look very flat? It's like, here's my skin, it's just very flat and there's no dynamic or texture to it. So that's our next step. When I say this is my favourite step, I mean it. I love contouring. It's like my jam, I love it so much. I bought this palette about four years ago now, and I've used it ever since. It's probably very out of date, but who cares? So I'm just grabbing like a light-ish kind of brown, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna fill in any edges that I feel need contouring. So for example, um, sideburns or beards, that kind of thing. So see here, if I put some stuff in my beard, see how that side automatically looks a lot better than that side, it just kind of like strengthens it a whole lot more. And I might even go so far as like, you know, down here, I'll put a little bit in here. Again, just to kind of strengthen that and be like, oh yeah, cool, he's got a goatee and I can see that from like, miles away. 
Same with my sideburns, I've got a bit of powder in my sideburns, so I just go in and strengthen those up a little bit. Just kind of make sure all those edges are nice and directional and straight. Now here's a really insane thing as well. I do go in and I contour my hairline, especially here and here. Um, and I shall show you why in just a second. So I'll show you the magic of a contoured hairline. Someone uh, pulled me up on it once and they were like, are you contouring your hairline? Like, are you putting makeup in your hairline? And I was like, well, yeah. And I will show you why. Because it just looks so much better. <laughs> okay, so you ready? That versus that. See what I mean? Like, there's just, there's no, there's no contest there. It looks insane up close. <laughs> but like, when you're on stage in theatre, like, it really stands out and makes it look a hell of a lot better. Especially with powder and everything that you put over it. It just makes things stand out, out a lot better. Um, even like eyebrows, just very, very lightly. We, you don't want too dark on the eyebrows, but if you've got any powder or anything, or if you just want to sharpen up edges, this is a good chance to just go in and do it. Worst case scenario, if something doesn't work, just take it off. Start again. Nice and easy. I like I like a good strong eyebrow, so you know. I'm going to do all that on the other side as well. I'm just making sure to blend out any hard edges as well. Especially along the hairline, you don't want anything too crazy going on. You can use a finger, just like really gently, you know, blend it all out. There we go. Excellent. Okay. Next is my, like, favourite thing to, to do on my face, which is contour my nose. It sounds insane, but I love it. Um, I love a really sharp angled nose, so I've got a beautiful uh, <laughs> little divot right here, so I really like following that down and going all the way down. You can kind of play around with your natural bone structure and kind of see where things want to go. But I just kind of follow that down until I get to like the, the uh, nostril part of my nose and then I kind of follow that part down and around, if that makes sense. So you've got this kind of like triangle-ish sort of shape going down. Obviously that looks quite insane right now, it's quite angled. So I just kind of drag, get a bit more of the stuff on it and just kind of drag it down my nose a little bit. Um, and again, just blending it out so it doesn't look so insane. Blend a little bit further. Really get in there and like, you know, mess it up a little bit. You don't want any like hard edges or lines or shadows. You just want nice and blended. So you can see like that side's very flat now. Whereas that side's a lot more angled. It looks insane on camera. <laughs> It looks insane in person, there's like, you know, there's no avoiding how insane it looks. What I sometimes do as well, if I've gone too insane with my contour, I'll just kind of go over it with my foundation brush and just kind of blend it in a little bit better. It's just looking a little bit more angled and stuff, but like not as crazy as it just being like a hard, straight hard line. You can see like that's nothing and then that on that side's a bit more angled and stuff and that's kind of what we want because otherwise your nose will just get swallowed into your face. Let's do the same thing on the other side. I just kind of go in here, do a little like divot line, follow your bone structure all the way down. I usually start with like a really harsh line. Slow blend over the nostril divot. Just to get those lines and shapes are moving and are flowing. I gotta say like this, like the bridge of my nose right here is probably the most, like it's my favorite part of my whole face. I just can't get over the angle, the circumference, that's the wrong word. <laughs> and that looks insane standing right here looking in the camera because I've got all the lights on and that kind of thing. But on stage it will look great from like, you know, however far away. <laughs> from, from the very back seat of the entire theatre. <laughs> because we are doing Les Mis, I think I might go for a bit more of a hollow cheek look. So I just do like a really basic, um, like straight line. Do you like the pinch check technique? You pinch, you pinch your cheeks. <laughs> you pinch your cheeks together, and then just follow that that line where your cheeks go. I do a little bit darker just so we got. Oh, that's way too dark. That's okay. We can work with this. Oh my god, that's way too dark. Okay, abort, abort mission. Okay, a line like that, and then I drag it down. But because this is stage and theatre and stuff, I'm just gonna put like a little bit in a line like that. And then maybe just drag it down and just blend, 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 blend. While we're here, I'm also going to chisel in my jaw. I just go down on the jaw and then out. 
just kind of just below my jawline and then again blending in those shadows there and just kind of going like that. I do love a good strong jawline. You can kind of tell where my neck ends now. <laughs> Let's do that foundation trick again. We're just going to like take that and just blend it down. I guess I've kind of blended it out a little bit too much now. <laughs> Um, but that looks a lot better now. It's kind of more like sunken in sort of thing. Let's go a little bit darker maybe and just put a little bit more in the pockets. There you go. It's looking a bit more sullen. We've got these angles going along here like cheekbone into the sideburn into the you know, up like that. So that's what we're kind of looking for. We're looking for like not hard angles. Like these ones are hard angles but these can be a little bit softer along here that sort of thing. Let's do the same on the other cheek. Mm -hmm. And then just like bring it down, just kind of chucking a whole lot on there. And then just kind of bringing it down again, doing my jawline real quick while I'm over here. So again, just going down on like the very outer edge of the jaw, just just behind my side bend pretty much. Hard edge and then you blend. So now we've got a, quite a sullen cheek, hollow, sullen looking cheeks. I tell you what, I saw Doctor Strange tonight, the new Doctor Strange film, and now that I'm doing this makeup and like knowing how like hollow his cheeks are and how high his cheekbones are, I'm like, man, I'm vibing hard with that tonight, let me tell you, let me tell you. Because we're looking for a bit of a sullen, sunken in look, I'm actually going to go in with brown shadow instead of black. Hello again, future Sam here. Just wanted to pop by and say that using brown eyeshadow will look really good in person, but it won't look so good on stage. Hi, this is Sam from the future, and I've already pre-done my face, and all we're going to do is just redo the eyes, and I'm going to go in and do my cheeks and lips. This was the final makeup look from that video. But I'm just going to go in and instead of doing so big on the eyes, I'm just going to show you a more basic eye and then we're going to move on from there. So as you can see, I've contoured everything. Everything looks pretty much the exact same. I just haven't done my cheeks, lips or eyes. So we're going to go in, we're going to use an eyeliner pencil. What I'm going to do is just go in on my waterline and just over the top a little bit. I like quite an intense dark eye look on stage and that's kind of what we're going for here. But just remember, don't go too big. You want... Pretty much you don't want your waterline and then a big black line. You want to kind of blend it into your waterline-ish area. You want to make sure you don't have any like thick black or thick white lines. Um, I guess the best thing to do is just kind of show you. You're just going to go very, very lightly in on the waterline or like just under the waterline. You can see that versus that. That's kind of what we're going for. Another big tip, if your makeup is itchy, don't scrub. What works best is patting, so I've got a real big itch right here. So just like a light pat or a tap will do. Just make sure you're not pulling any makeup off. It will annoy you to, you know, the nth degree, but I find just a light pat, that's all you need. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna go in and just keep filling this line right here. Just underneath your eyelashes. Don't go below your eyelashes. Try and get up there as close as you can. If you're feeling Daring enough, like I am right now, just go in on your waterline a little bit. As you get closer to the tear duct over here, you want to kind of not have it as harsh. You want to kind of fade it off a little bit. That's actually looking pretty good. Depending on your eye shape as well, you'll have like, you know, different eyes to mine, so just be wary of that. I'm going to go over the eye now. You want to start about here on your eye, probably just above, I guess just over the halfway point, just as like at least this part left and just go down here and just fill in this part here. And just remember to get as close to your lash line as possible. I'll show you what happens if you don't. Okay, so I've just gone over my eyelid, but I've left my lash line kind of out and it's, you can't really see it like this. But up close, see how there's like big chunks here and here? So I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna fill it in a little bit more. Oh, I hate doing this. My eyes get so watery. So I'm just gonna go in and fill in that just above the lash line. And then it stops quite suddenly here, so I'm just gonna, again, feather it off and fade it down towards my tear duct. If you are feeling daring enough, you can fill in this little part right here. See how much better that looks on either side. And especially from really far away, you can tell this eye stands out a lot more than this eye does. And that's the beauty of 
eyeliner. Always carry a sharpener in your makeup case um, for the eyeliner pencil because in my experience they break and it's a pain to sharpen them again. I'm just going to go in and pretty much finish up this eye, going on the lash line, going in the water line. But again, you can see that looks a lot more effective than just your white eye like that. kind of just stands out a lot more, especially, you know, shadows back here, up here. It just looks a whole lot better. I'm going to go in and quickly do the other eye and I shall be back in two shakes of a Sam's tail. So you can see that's a really clean eye look now and you can kind of see how well that works from a distance. You can see just my eyes pop a lot more and stand out. You can see everything's, you know, again, circled. Like, look here and, you know, everything kind of draws in. Look here, look here, pretty much. <laughs> I've been wearing this makeup for about an hour now and it's pretty much set like that. So just with the powder. So just keep, you know, doing that. So with that, we're going to move on to the next and I guess final step here. I am going to grab the teeniest, tiniest bit of foundation. I'm just going to go in, I'm just going to put a little bit on my lips, just the tiniest bit, right? So I guess this is more specific to Les Mis, but I've just put a bit of foundation on my lips, and then I'm going to put the uh, red, this lip colour, over it again, just to kind of bring that colour back out. We don't want to completely swallow our lips into the colour, but we do want just a little bit of colour on there. I have this brush that I've used for absolutely ever with this kind of thing and it's it needs a good wash to be honest, <laughs> so that's the thing I'm going to be doing next. Lip colour, just this slightest bit, you don't want to go too rosy and too red unless you know you're in a scene where that needs to be happening. I'm just going to go in and cover the whole lip. And then I'll just go in and I'll fill in the top parts of the lip where I've missed. And you don't want to go full clown mouth, you want it nice and clean around your lips. If you notice you've gone over too much, just tidy it up with a bit of foundation, but really just follow your natural lip line. Don't go too far over unless that is the look. But for most theatre shows, we're just gonna go and follow those lip lines. Next, and what I guess this is the uh, final step now, what we're gonna do is grab a little bit more lip product and we're just gonna put it on the uh, balls of our cheeks right here. So if you kind of smile, you can see like here, just like on the on the edge there. Keep in mind too, if you smile and you put it here and then up here, it'll completely change the makeup look. So make sure you're putting it on even sides of both your face in roughly the same spot. You don't want to go like up here and then like underneath here and it'll just look really strange because it you won't look symmetrical. You want to make it look kind of natural, so make sure you're copying on both sides. Just in the middle balls of your cheeks. Like blend it out. I'm going to actually go in and use my finger to blend things out a lot more. Biggest thing, if you're using your hands to do makeup, make sure your fingers are clean. Make sure your hands are clean. Make sure your brushes are clean. Currently it's looking just like very dotty on both these cheeks. It's looking blended in person, but I'm just going to grab my foundation brush and blend it out further on both sides. Just blend it out just nice and lightly. Just so it kind of adds a bit more colour into the middle of your face here, and so it's not just like a big white section. That's looking a lot better. Still, you can kind of still tell where I put it, but again, it's looking a lot more blended in person, so just keep that in mind. So, this is the final makeup look. You can see I've got my cheeks chiselled in, you've got my hairline all contoured on both sides, it looks really good. The eyeliner is there, just a little bit around each eye, it's not too much, it's not too little. Uh, my nose is contoured, so it looks, it stands out on my face. My cheeks are, uh, you know, got the bit of rouge there, just a little tiny bit. Especially for Les Mis, we want to look kind of, we want to look pale sometimes, so not a whole lot on the cheeks. And then same thing on the lips, just not, not a whole lot, just a little bit, so it stands out on your face a little bit more. That's pretty much the whole makeup look. Hair is another whole thing entirely. Can't help you out there, I've got way too much of it, so. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Makeup's so cool. So now I'm just going to run through how to take it all off. I've got these wipes. Um, they're from Kmart. The best thing about them is that they are biodegradable. Biodegradable? Biodegradable. 
first I'm going to take off just like my foundation and then I'm going to go in with the eyes and around here and kind of clean up all these edges. What I find is getting the lighter colours off first is the best and then I go back through and I do, you know, the rest of it with the corners and edges. Okay, so you can obviously see that is the side that I've taken the makeup off, that is the side that I haven't and you can obviously see the two differences there. You can see it takes a bit of time to get the eyeliner off. I like leaving it on in solidarity for the new MCR song coming out today. My Chemical Romance just dropped a song and it is like my anthem right now. So, you know, that's all I'm going to be talking about for the next three weeks. And now on to the other side. We're just going to go in and just do the exact same thing under the eye, scrub and wipe. Make sure to use every inch of your makeup wipe. Only one will do. You won't need more than one. Usually if I use two, it's literally just to clean up my face and get off any more excess. But I find that using one is perfectly fine and I'll get everything off with one. After everything's off, I just go back in with some moisturizer. Same deal, I just tuck some on. I'm feeling very dry right now, especially around the eyes and the lip area. That's it all off, so I'm gonna pass back over to future past Sam and wrap this video up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If you're currently doing Les Mis with the local theater company that I am currently mentioning, can't wait to see you there. And I hope this video has helped you a whole lot. Let me know if it has. And if you're just watching this to get some tips for your own theater production adventures, then good luck. And I hope this helps as well. I shall see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.